I didn't. I thought I was more Malcolm X, but I find out I'm more MLK because as I'm getting hosed down every day by the press and financially, I'm just standing there. And when when I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog was biting my arm, and I I I, I almost shed a tear, almost. But I still walked in stride through it. Yeah, I, I think I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I think. Who was they though? We can't Cor- say who they Cor- is. Can press. We? I'm not using the. I don't, I don't use the word as the as the way I guess you, you guys use. I'm, I'm talking. It is about them it. though, isn't it? I mean, because <laughs> no. and, and because when you think <laughs> about not. it, consider it. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what What do I mean? Like, uh, uh, okay, so how about? Are you leaving? Watching Kanye West walk off Tim Pool's podcast after comparing himself to Malcolm X and Martin Luther King goes to show that it takes more ego and arrogance than truthful insight and wisdom to get millions of people to blindly follow you and even consider you for president. Will humanity ever outgrow its addiction to celebrity worship? I hope we can. But for right now, we're stuck with the fact that billions of people, myself included, we all fall prey to celebrity worship. It's like we become deer caught in the shiny headlights of a celebrity star power. This is because we're social creatures who seek to imitate people more successful than ourselves as we strive to survive and thrive on this planet. At worst, we end up with leaders like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Mao Zedong, and to a lesser degree, we end up with presidents like Donald Trump. So God help us if we end up with Kanye West as president, Nick Fuentes as VP, and Milo Yiannopoulos as Secretary of State or Secretary of Anything. For anyone who doesn't know Tim Pool, he's a podcaster and quasi-journalist, and I've put a link below to the video of his interview with Kanye West. As for celebrity worship, there's no need to explain who Kanye West is, though there is no explaining his complete lack of judgment as of late with all his anti-Semitic gibberish he's been spewing. As for Milo Yiannopoulos, if you know who he is, then you're probably a political news junkie like I am. But for anyone who's already forgotten, back in 2016, he was close to becoming a household name for being quite the provocateur as a gay Catholic Greek with a British accent who married a black guy. That and the fact that he trolled Leslie Jones for her role in the all-female Ghostbusters remake. And it seems Milo Yiannopoulos has been advising Kanye West on a possible career in politics, much like Milo's was advising Marjorie Taylor Greene on her media presence. So that's how he rears his ugly head into this picture. Nick Fuentes, however, not too many people know him. And it's a real shame people will be getting to know him in the coming days. Because attention-seeking egomaniacs like him, as well as Milo Yiannopoulos, are the kind of people so starved for attention and possibly power, that any publicity is good publicity, even if it exposes them for the malignant narcissists they are. Because people like them prefer being hated than being ignored, which is why it's no surprise they would be Trump supporters. And this is what is so troubling about their recent visit to Trump's Mar-a-Lago and later Kanye West's walking off the Tim Pool show this week. It's troubling that it even matters. By the way, I say all this as someone who voted for Trump in 2020, because I could not bring myself to vote for Joe Biden and the dangerously duplicitous bad faith actors the Democrat Party is proving itself to be. I've also enjoyed listening to Kanye West's music, though I wouldn't call him a musical genius in comparison to someone like Prince, for example. And he's definitely not a genius when it comes to marketing and public relations. And I used to listen to Milo Yiannopoulos before he was made into a public pariah. Though I would listen to him for a laugh, not because I found him to say anything remotely insightful. But it was a guilty pleasure to watch him mock social justice warriors and shamelessly take a piss on Leslie Jones, who rightfully deserved to be mocked. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen of celebrity stardom. But once Milo started yammering about the supposed rite of passage gay teenage boys go through when they're seduced by older men, he got a double dose of the same medicine he dished out on Leslie Jones. And while Milo's reveled in the kind of social criticism Leslie Jones couldn't seem to handle, he also proved that there's a limit to being such a controversial provocateur, especially in the eyes of the conservative Republican base he was desperately trying to appeal to. Since then, he's tried to weasel his way back into the public limelight by advocating for gay conversion therapy, 
which I can only imagine turns out to be expensive gay orgies among men fighting their homosexual attraction to each other, which they shouldn't have to resist in the first place. I know I shouldn't laugh at that, but I think it's okay to laugh at the fact that Milo's been selling religious statues on TV, which some people would say is kind of gay, but who am I to judge? Anyway, sorry for all my desperate stabs at humor, but I'm trying to be somewhat funny since I did title this video after the classic joke of three people, usually stooges, walking into a bar. And speaking of which, if these guys were the three stooges, Nick Fuentes is clearly Mo. Even though you would assume Milo's new haircut would make him the Mo of the group, I think he's more like Larry, just happy to be included in their wild and crazy shenanigans. Whether Kanye likes it or not, he's the curly of the group because he's such a freaking moron. The fact he couldn't even hold a normal conversation on who exactly is quote unquote canceling him, even if they do happen to be Jewish, goes to show he's too dumb to speak coherently about anything. And thanks to mindless celebrity worship, there are millions of people just as dangerously dumb to come to his defense. At this point, it's hard to tell if his behavior can be blamed on a mental illness or just sheer stupidity. One thing's for sure, his sense of judgment stinks by allowing such low-level celebrities to write his coattails. Especially a legitimate racist like Nick Fuentes, who is just as happy to use Kanye as he is to look down on him simply because he's black. I don't know a lot about Nick Fuentes, nor do I care to. But when people like him get their wish to be noticed especially at the highest levels of society's attention by dining with a former U.S. president. If you're concerned how the direction of this country will affect your future, you're compelled to be informed. I first listened to Nick Fuentes a couple years ago, and he just struck me as an annoying, hyper-conservative troller who seemed to be doing more harm than good regarding our Second Amendment gun rights by claiming people should be allowed to own rocket launchers or nuclear submarines. I don't want to misquote him, but now that most of his videos have been scrubbed off social media platforms, it's hard to find that pseudo-intellectual debate he was having with another YouTuber years ago. But I distinctly remember it because it was the first time, as a gun owner, that I found myself disagreeing with a pro-Second Amendment advocate. Yet when it comes to the First Amendment, we need to allow the Nick Fuenteses of the world to expose themselves for the toxic morons that they are simply because the enemy you can't see is much more dangerous than the enemy you can. Not to mention people like Nick Fuentes build up more of a mystique and gain more influence every time they're silenced. They're given the excuse to seem dangerous and therefore somewhat powerful, especially to other people who feel powerless. And it's such a shame that not everybody has the ability to articulate their own thoughts. And that's especially bad when those same people don't think for themselves in the first place and allow a Nick Fuentes to do the thinking and talking for them. Scarily enough, that's the majority of humanity. It's why billions of people believe in demonstrably false and conflicting religious ideas that can't all be true at the same time, and why billions of other people fall for dictatorships that ban religions altogether, but still manage to create cults of their personalities thanks to humanity's celebrity worship. This is the danger of one of our most default settings, our dependency upon one another. The fact that no one can do everything for themselves means we need to delegate authority through division of labor and ultimately government. This is why anarchy is impossible, even among the most diehard anarchists. Government, in a sense, is inescapable, and there will always be someone vying for that power. I don't think we need to worry about Kanye West and Nick Fuentes becoming president and vice president. But crazier things have happened in human history, such as the Holocaust, which Nick Fuentes has been said to deny. But in the unlikely chance they do become president and vice president, I feel like their relationship will be that of George Bush Jr. and Dick Cheney, with Nick Fuentes worming through Kanye's brain like a mental parasite. That would be as scary as it is hilarious to joke about now especially the thought of Milo Yiannopoulos being Secretary of State, who also runs a gay conversion therapy spa on the side. And that's what's most troubling of all three of these stooges, their appeal to Christianity. Because just like a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, so does religion when it comes to truly bad ideas, namely anti-Semitism, homophobia, misogyny, and conspiratorial thinking like QAnon. 
Yet that's precisely why we shouldn't be canceling them and giving them any more fodder for mystique and curiosity. It's counterproductive to think, but we need to hear these stooges speak so we can critique their false and stupid ideas. And depending on your sense of humor, they might even be funnier than the original Three Stooges. If I got anything wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos, check out the links for my original art and merchandise, and thanks for watching.